What is up, guys? It's Andy Purcell, and this is the show for the realists. Say goodbye to the lies, the fakeness, and delusions of modern society, and welcome to motherfucking reality. Guys, today we have Andy and DJ. Cruise the motherfucking internet. What's happening, bro? Hey, how's it going? Good. I'm not going to do the intro. That's fine. I don't want to do the intro either. All right, cool. Good. We got a guest today. (laughs) Um, Regular guest at this point in time. That's number three? Four four times. Is it fourth time? I think it is the fourth time. Yeah, well... I think you're the only one that's been on the show four times. Occasionally, you guys need some real jokes, so I'll take it. That's right. We do. Yeah. We do need comes, some help. Comes in shooting. Yeah, DJ, DJ's been dragging us down. <laughs> I, almost stole his, I almost stole his intro again. Like which, how, I, how I usually steal the motherfucking internet intro, oh, yeah. which I've done every other time. I almost st- stole it from him. It's fine. It wouldn't be the first thing I got stolen from him. <laughs> usually, it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> That was great. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, guys, welcome, Mr. Kyle Creek, to the show. It's good nice. to see you, bro. Thanks for having Fuck me. Back, that was man. so fast. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Jeez. Got a fucking sharpshooter oh, over here. Oh, man. Uh, What's going so on, man? Yeah. Man, like I told you, I've become a plant nerd recently. I think yeah. we talked about that. Yeah. I've been laying low. I uh, took Instagram off my phone a couple of months ago, and I've really just been focused on planting trees at my house and writing books and it's been nice would you become take... one of these greta thunberg weirdos one of the, no not the, that kind of trying weirdo. to make up for your carbon footprint no yeah, not the granola close. guys we were just talking about how the new truck i want i want to get that new big dodge so okay. uh, that'll make up that's for the opposite <laughs> there we go so you're yeah. planting the trees to make up for the truck yes yeah, it's that's... all about balance <laughs> the thing that you say doesn't exist yeah climatology <laughs> <laughs> oh man well, yeah so dude wait low. hold on I, we got to get into this how did you get into plants because, like, you show up here, and all of a sudden, you're fucking botanist. <laughs> like, what's going on, man? Yeah. I think it's my personality. When I get into something, I get addicted pretty hard. Yeah. And so I just I got this new place down in Florida, and I was just trying to plant. Originally, I was just trying to create some privacy between me and my neighbors. And so I was trying to find plants that would grow big and wide. And so I started researching, and then I just got into it. I didn't realize there was, like, 50 different kinds of palm trees. I wanted to make sure I was planting stuff that wasn't going to get my dog sick. And so I just be kind of came a plant nerd. And like I said, I walked into so your- So you scour the internet for- Pretty much. I've just been reading about plants like a lot. Like if you look at like the ads I'm getting served now up on the Google ad server, like they're all for like plant farms and nurseries and stuff. It's funny. Hmm. Hmm. Are you into that shit? Mm-mm. No, I mean, no, no. I don't even give me Bro, I don't know the difference between any plants, bro. Well, you got a Chinese fan palm when you first walk in. The big one in your in lobby the corner? on the yeah, left yeah. side that goes really wide. It's Is that Chinese. a big deal? That's, yeah, I mean, you're up here in Missouri. Oh, really? It's Chinese fan palm. Yeah. All I know is we, put, we pay a whole bunch of money <laughs> wait, for our plants wait, wait, in here. So we got fucking China in the building? Is that what you're telling Pretty me? Pretty much. Fuck. You should check the, that it's thing's listening. probably mine. <laughs> it's probably it's, mine. It's the transmitter from the Chinese spy balloon. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, they send it over here. Oh, like, man. Now, wait. Now, we got to clear some shit. You ain't fucking vegan, right? No. All right. No. We'll do Not that, at all. That That's shit right. here. Yeah. None of that shit. No, we eat meat. But That's yeah, right. I mean, in six months, I'll probably move on to another hobby. That's just how I've always been, though. Yeah. Like, if I'm going to get into something, I want to really get into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that makes sense because, like, dude, you have a wide variety of knowledge on just things. That, I'd appreciate That's that. That's probably why, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It is. That's yeah. why. You know, I get into I just... It's probably bad in a sense because I hop around a lot. Like yeah. I don't really stick to things too much aside from writing. And that's the one thing in my life I've always wanted to really stick to. But as far as like hobbies, man, I've always been all over the board. Bro, me, I'm like that too, dude. Like once I get that, once I get it, I'm like, okay, this is what yeah. it's about. I'm like on to the next shit. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Super into it. And then I'm like, all right, yeah. I know plants. Now I got to figure out. Now I'll get yeah. into fish next and I'll dig a pond and I'll start putting weird fish in it. Yeah, I don't cross the threshold into like master of the thing. <laughs> I just like, I get like to where I'm like, okay. Better, better than most. Here's what it is. Yeah. I understand it. And then I'm like, all right, this is boring. And but that's I'm... still more than most people will ever do. Yeah. And that's what I think is cool. And that's probably why you and I get along, because I feel like we can talk about a lot of different subjects, too. Yeah. We all have at least, like, some knowledge of one of those things. Yeah. You, I'm know, not, you, you know how, like, some people, they get into shit, and then they stay into it forever? Mm-hmm. Like Star Wars? Mm-hmm. Or golf. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, they're fucking Star Wars people. They're a perfect example of that shit, bro. They get yeah. into it when they're fucking five, and yep. they stay there. You know what I'm saying? Still with them. Yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's some cool shit in Star Wars. Yeah. There is. Like the big walkers, those big walkers. I was ATs. Bro, I wanted one of those. The giant, like, well, you, pretty still- much, you pretty much have one now with your tanks. Yeah, but that's a little You need to call your guy and say, hey, I want one of these ATATs. I do. I want the four walker, the four 
one. The four-legged. The two one looks thing. a little unstable. And then you need to get that power loader from Aliens that Ripley comes out in when she grabs the Queen Alien. Dude. You need a power loader, too. Dude. I don't know, man. I might want the power loader more. Well, imagine that out in your warehouse. Yeah, it'd be badass. Mm -hmm. I think you should get one. Someone's who could build me a power loader. Somewhere, someone has recreated. One of you guys can thing. do it. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You know what I really want? You know, you know, in a uh, Pacific Rim. I never saw that. Oh, bro, the Jaegers in Pacific Rim. Nope. Let me see. They're like I mean, these uh, big fucking three hundred foot tall transformer things. And these dudes Jaegers. drive them, and they fight each other. Oh, I, think, you, I thought you said some Jaegers. Like, we can get you some Jaeger. I don't know about yeah. the Jaeger. I'm Dude, a, they have a... There was a... Meister. There was a Jaeger, bro. Just isn't that the Pacific concept? Rim. Isn't that Pacific Rim? Isn't it just giant robots fighting? Yeah. Isn't that the premise? But there was another movie What's like that? that back in the fucking 90s, or the 80s, called Robot Jocks. And nobody remembers that movie. I've heard of that, but yeah. I've never seen it. It was the same premise as Pacific Rim, but it was called Robot Jocks. Yeah, those big-ass robots, dude. So, dude, Google robot jocks. So this is like Rock'em Sock'em robots, but brought to life. Yeah. What do you, do you remember that game as a kid? Yeah. No, no. Here it is, dude. It's it's there. It is robot jocks. J O X. Bro. Oh, go up to Google there. Uh, go to that top picture there on the right. You can kind of see what they're like. Yeah. So they're like these fucking. It's like Power Rangers when sorta, they all come together and but, create those giant robots. Yeah, but less gay. Yeah. I don't know about that part. We have yet, yeah. yet to. What was wrong with Power Rangers? It was the tight the Power tight Rangers outfits. were fine. <laughs> Power Rangers is pretty fucking. Is, is it gay? I think so. Oh, man. <laughs> I, was, I remember when I, I found think it's out, actual. I think it's programming. I remember when I found I think out everything's programming, the, the black right? one, the black Power Ranger wasn't really black. That disappoint you? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Because I thought they were all the color that they were. So you think there's red people and pink people? Listen, bro, I was young, man. Did you think the red guy was like an Indian? No, I just thought he was a white guy that got sunburned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> All right. Onward Look at upward. this guy. Yeah, man, it's clean. That's a fucking pimp right there. What is that, what is that building? That's the uh, Villa that's, Zarata Museum in St. Augustine, Florida. So this was some guy's summer home. He That's lived in, in Florida? Yeah, he lived in Boston most of the time, and then he built this summer home for himself down in St. Augustine. I think it was like the late 1800s. And the interior of that home is one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. But there's so many of these cool old mm. homes down there in Florida. What, what architecture is that considered? It looks like an like Indian. I don't know what that would be. It'd be Middle Eastern for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's like some Asian-inspired. It's cool. Yeah, it's rad. You know what I like, bro? I think we should get back to is like Gothic-type. Yeah, the gothic Romanesque. Yeah, bro. I like I like the Richardsonian Romanesque, which is what you see a lot of down in Saint uh, Saint Louis, like the downtown, the stonework yeah. and the turrets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like a combination, like you know, like the outside of the Union Station Hotel, yeah. like yeah. that kind of stuff's gorgeous. Dude, we we ha people don't realize that there's an actual reason why buildings don't look that way, and it has nothing to do with what they cost to make. They just want to make you depressed. Yeah, that's right. It's called uh, brutalism. It's demoralization mm -hmm. of society. It's the big heavy concrete. They don't you know. want you to have pride in your in your in your city, mm -hmm. in your country. It's about removing pride and everything. Well, it's like what you were talking about in a recent episode and you were saying if you tell someone, Are you gonna lay a thousand bricks and just create a three mile wall? Or are you gonna lay a thousand bricks and create like this beautiful cathedral? It's the same thing. When yeah. you have when you have a city center that has a cathedral in it that took fifty years and hundreds of artisans to make, like anyone in that town is gonna feel connected and be like, Wow, this is right. a beautiful piece of architecture. Yeah. My grandpa did the stonework there. Oh, my my dad was the glass guy that was doing the stained glass. Like you're gonna have this pride. But when you when everything looks like a parking structure you don't give a fuck about yeah, it that's right you're not gonna that's fight. intentional you're not gonna fight for it you're not gonna yeah. fight to save it and you go to these city centers now and you, you sit in like these wind tunnels where everything's just uncomfortable and people are sitting out you know trying to sit down on a steel bench trying to eat a sandwich and no one looks happy anymore but then you go to europe where they still have a lot of that stuff Dude. And it's, you know everyone talks about oh i love the european culture because there's a lot of you know uh, dining on patios and people socializing. Well, look at the areas they're doing it in. Like they're still built for that. Whereas you know our our modern cities are not designed to accommodate that kind of social connection or just like you're saying, like the pride in something beautiful. Dude, have you been to Barcelona? No, I have not. But I've scoured go. the internet. You should go. Yeah, it's some of the coolest architecture. Have you been to Barcelona? Yeah. When did you go? Yeah. Fuck, I don't. know. It was probably. It had to be like. Oh. 
who? I'm just surprised whenever I hear you've left your house. Like, yeah. like well, that's that's a that's a more recent thing. Yeah. That's like, like the if, last. If I see you leave Missouri, I'm like, oh shit, Andy's going places. Yeah, that's a that's more recent, dude. Like that's really since kind of like COVID, and you know, since I started doing this show, like, yeah, I just don't like COVID. Really, kind of fucked up my ability to go out in public, like with the people harassing you and mm. screaming at you and like, I don't forget things. So for me, like I, when I go out now, I look at everybody and I'm mm. like, those are motherfuckers that will fucking turn on me in a second, scream at me and shit. And they're not saying shit right now, mm -hmm. you know? And like, it's just a very inauthentic, I don't know. I know it's wrong to think that, but like, that's how I feel, dude. I just don't the right word. For yeah. It, it's like, you guys were, you guys are all in here acting like we're all nice and cool. And bro, you were telling people to put us in camps. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't forget that shit. You know, like, and unfortunately, <clears throat> you know, with this show, you know, we deal with, like you asked me earlier, we deal with a lot of like weirdos that like show up and, you know, they don't agree with the things that I say. And I, you know, I just stay at home, bro. And then I got like, you know, as you build a business and as you become more successful, you know, the relationships that you have become transactional for people. You know, mm -hmm. they, everybody wants shit from you. And when you don't give it to them, they hate you. So like, I just, I'm just like, it. I just won't let anybody come around me. Yeah. So now I just chill, dude. And honestly, I fucking love it. Like, it's not like I don't like it. I like it a lot. So pour myself into our companies and doing the show and just keep to myself out here, man. I'm not one of these fucking people, bro. Like, I'm not one of them. Like, one of these, like, like, I see all these people on the internet and they're out trying to, you know, I don't know. Like, I just don't, I don't connect with it. You know, out trying to, like, play each other. Like, oh, I went here, I went there. Here's my photo from here. Yeah, it's just not, stuff. I'm not one of them, dude. I, I just like my life and the reason I do this shit is hopefully people get value out of it and, you know. That's what it is. I think the difference there is I think a lot of people, and we, we were talking about this earlier, a lot of people, um, I even think it was traveling, a lot of people are traveling for other people more than themselves. Yeah. Like they're going to a destination to get the Instagram or they're going there to get the picture as yeah. opposed to going somewhere they genuinely want yeah. to go. Yeah. And so I think when you talk about things to become transactional, I think even travel has become transactional for people. Like the whole reason I- It's say, a mission. Yeah, I flew yeah. here to get that photo at that spot and so I can put it on my Instagram. Yeah. And like you didn't even, and people are like, oh, I love to travel in a world of travel. It's like, you're not really though. Yeah, you, you mean you, like when they all go to Greece and take a picture, the exact the same, same picture? same fucking photo. Yeah. But I was going to say though, real quick before we move on, if you like that gothic architecture, you need to go to Edinburgh, Scotland. Yeah. That's just like that deep spire, really yeah. dark, creepy looking yeah. shit. I it's, love that shit. Dude, Edinburgh, Scotland, below the castle there, walking those little cobblestone streets there is probably... I think the coolest city I've ever been to. Dude, you would love Barcelona. Yeah, they, I've, they, I've last seen like the cathedrals there. It's the same yeah. kind of look. You see the Sangrada La Familia? That's probably what it was. Fuck, dude. Yeah, it's it's insane. Wait, it's insane. Well, it? let's go. Let's go uh, when, when, uh, let's go to those concerts over there we talked about in Europe this yeah, year. We're, yeah, let's I'm in on that. that. With Zoltan? Yeah, let's yeah, do that. Let's fucking do that. You said since. You know where else Sangrado I want to go? Is I, I, Holy I've shit. talked to a lot of friends of mine that have traveled. Bro, the world. it took 100 years to build that building. No, what the yeah. fuck? Yep. There's an architect that has all kinds of buildings through Barcelona. His name is Gaudin. Ugh. And they all they are all ridiculously cool. Yeah, bro. That thing is fucking massive. Yeah, there's a lot of this in uh Paris too. Some of the Look how many uh, how many uh, like spires it has. But this is exactly what we're talking about. Like imagine yeah. this now imagine this is your city center. Yeah. Bro, DJ, I'm not shitting you, bro. I've been all over the world. That is the craziest. That is the craziest building i've ever seen person yeah it's fucking massive it's the details insane it's i've never seen anything like it you said a hundred years to yeah. build yeah and the thing is it's probably still constantly being worked on to it, this is. Day. it is it is they're either updating something yep. they're fixing something they're adding they're reinforcing that's what i'm saying like easy so I think in a good example of what we are talking about here is do you remember when the Notre Dame the Notre Dame Cathedral caught fire Yes. Do you remember how many people rallied to earn Price. money for yeah. that building? Yeah. Do you think anybody is going to do that in one of these modern skyscrapers topples? No. No. They, they, 
Now, well, thing, no, there's no pride. Because it takes a year to build them. They can fucking build another and one. And there's, there's no pride. There's yeah. no there's no memory. There's no attachment to it. But you better believe if that's your city center and people start rioting and they're throwing Molotov cocktails and breaking people down are the doors of that, defend it. people are going to go out there and fucking yeah. get violent on the streets just the, the, you know, the same way to defend something like that. But it's not going to happen in these modern cities. Yeah. Well, dude, I think a big part of the revitalization of this country has to do with the legitimate architecture that we rebuild here because mm -hmm. we have to st i mean this is an intentional demoralization of of our country and i've heard trump talk about it a few times where he's talking about built getting some of the money going towards revitalization of some of the inner cities with like good architecture um hopefully someone follows through on that i can tell you if i was president dude that'd be a huge priority mm -hmm. Even like, I mean, you go downtown St. Louis has some beautiful yeah. buildings yeah. that have just been left to rot. Yeah, if they would just enforce the law, that'd be yeah. great. Might be all right. Yeah. Yep. It's real shit, man. Well, uh, Kyle, you want to do some cre some 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 cruising? Well, let's do I it. Let's do some creaking. That's where we well, let's do creaking too. Whatever you want, man. <laughs> let's get into it, guys. Uh, remember, if you want to see any of these pitches, articles, links, videos, go to andyforseller.com. You guys can find them linked there. With that being said, let's get into it. First headline. Talk of the day. Um, this one's uh, catching a lot of eyeballs. Let's dive into headline number one. Headline number one reads, Shocking moment. TikToker tells illegal immigrants how to invade American homes and invoke squatter rights. As provocative video is viewed almost four million times. Provocative? Have you guys seen this? You I saw did. this? I have seen it. You seen it? I okay. saw it yesterday when I was actually on my plane. I watched it flying in. Let's dive into this a little bit. So a TikTok influencer is advising illegal immigrants on how to invade American homes and invoke squatter rights, making it difficult for them to be removed from properties. Lionel Moreno, who goes by at uh, Lito Official underscore 25 online and appears to be a Venezuelan migrant, has told undocumented immigrants that under U.S. law, if a house is not inhabited, we can seize it. He's referring to squatters' rights or adverse possession laws, a common law principle that allows an illegal inhabitant to acquire ownership of a property based on continuous occupation without the legal owner's consent. Moreno, alleging he has friends who have already taken about seven homes, argued the only way for migrants to not live in the streets or be a public burden is to seize and invade abandoned properties. Uh, the now viral video, which has viewed uh, been viewed almost four million times, has prompted outrage from many social media users. Some have claimed Moreno is promoting terrorism um, and are now calling on the FBI and Department of Homeland Security um, to action. Uh, squatters' rights laws, uh, they exist in all 50 states and have sparked a crisis among, across the nation. Uh, quote, serial squatters are overtaking homes and helpless families booted out of their houses by crooks and uh, are desperately turning into vigilantes to reclaim their homes. Here's the video. It is in Spanish, um, but we'll read the subtitles as it goes along. Mi gente, My people, I have thought about invading a home marido, in the United States now that I have became ya que me enteré que aware of a law ley that ley exists que dice that if a house si is not occupied, we no can take it over. Capiche? Podemos expropiarla. Capiche? Muchachos, Guys, aquí the law of taking este over land applies here in the United States, and I think that will be my next business. Y creo que ese será Invade houses mi that are abandoned now, Invadir but I have found some information. Ya que me he buscado unos códigos con mis amigos africanos. Like my African y me friends, que ya and they told me that, seven homes, that they have seven homes confiscated. Y como dice el dicho, papi, and the saying goes, hay que Daddy, la you got to find the y way around. And the way around is now. Invading homes, now we, that we are homeless, and it's the only way we have. En de calle. Y not es to la live in the streets and not be a public charge. Para no vivir en la calle y no ser una carga pública. Capichi. La ley dice the law says que that the house is abandoned, deteriorated, and in poor condition. Estado, we can come and repair it, live in it, and if we can, sell it, si podemos, even. Request credit with it. 
What do you think about? Um, so Moreno, who is believed to live in a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, with his partner and their infant daughter, has amassed a following of more than 500,000 on TikTok by creating videos targeted at migrants. The migrant influencer in a video posted four days ago is encouraging illegal immigrants to take over unoccupied homes. Um, guys, what do we got on this? Fuck this guy. <laughs> um, first of all, I don't think squatters' rights should even exist. I think that's just like an oxymoron. Like you shouldn't have rights as a squatter for that. And if I, if I didn't see like the seriousness of his tone or his facial expressions, I would almost think this was like satire. Like he was joking about how this is going to no, be a business venture fuck. for him. But you can tell you can tell when you see his face that he he's serious about it. Um, and I also find it funny, and this is how I think a lot of people are going to defend it, is how he's saying, we're going to do this so we're not a public charge. Or It's almost like he's saying they're going to do it to be helpful. Like, oh, we're not going to be on the streets. We're going to be helpful and live in a house. It, it, this whole thing is just problematic. And, you know, I, I know Andy's going to have something to say about this, but people need to not stand for this shit. Like, you can't let this happen. Like, the fact that people have been able to squat in someone's house in New York or wherever it's been happening, and the neighbors, first of all, if I was a neighbor, I knew someone was squatting in the house next to me that, you know, was probably here doing a bunch of criminal shit or someone that, you know, I don't want next to where my kid lives. I'd be over in that house myself that night kicking those people out. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wait for the police to do it. I wouldn't wait for my neighbor to find someone to do it. I'd go help myself just because that's my community. And I think it's kind of pathetic that it's been allowed to go on as long as it has. Yeah. Oh, it's just getting started. That's the fact. It's it's just getting started. That's the point that has to be understood here. I told you guys this was what was going to happen. I told you like two years ago, this is what was going to happen. Because it's already happened. Okay? This isn't rocket science. We can look at what's happened in other places in the world and tell what's going to happen here. And when you look at what's happened in Europe, and when you look at what's happened in some of the countries of South America, El Salvador, Venezuela, this is what they did. And I said very clearly a number of years ago that if you don't stand up against this, you will go on vacation and you will come home and there will be somebody living in your house that you can't get out. And then I told you that the law would side with them. And you guys call me fucking crazy. Well, here we go. Okay, and what's going to have to happen here is American people are going to have to legitimately stand up against these people. And that's what they want. That's what they're creating. They're creating a situation where over the summer, it's not going to be George Floyd this time. It's going to be migrants and citizens. And when you shoot a fucking migrant for being in your house, they're going to arrest you. And that's what's going to happen. These people better be careful because real, real talk, Americans might have been docile and they might have been. Um, you know, I, I, there's a, there's a huge amount of Americans that have guns that are really kind of just waiting for the signal to do whatever needs to be done. And once the law fully breaks down, which it's going to, and people are not concerned about being held accountable for standing up for themselves, there's going to be a literal fucking problem for these people and you know this guy getting on the internet and saying this shit if i'm being honest i think he's putting his own life in danger because if it got that viral and you know just the way he said it and his cocky little face and all this shit yeah seeing like, his face makes it a lot more it makes you pissed yeah yeah and mm -hmm. he's sitting here saying they're gonna fucking take this and that come get some dude that's my attitude with it Come, I hope you do. I hope you come to my house, and I hope you try to get some. Do you think every state would side with the squatter, though? Because well, I don't think yeah. I don't think it would happen in every state, would it? Well, I mean, every state has squatter rights. Like they have every well, all you have 50 states, states. With, like castle laws and stuff, though. Right, but and, and that, that's what like so I want I want to play devil's advocate here a little bit, right? So like you know you look at a city like St. Louis for example, right? You go over to the north side of St. Louis, there are thousands of abandoned homes, thousands of them, right? Now, obviously, we understand that the issue here is that the fact that these people don't belong in this country. That's a side issue. You know, but squatter rights, they have existed in this country for a long time. I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but is there a certain degree that, like, you know, we talk about taking, you know, responsibility and accountability for your life, your community. 
you know, as a homeowner, as a, somebody that's owning property, and, and if you're not taking care of it, what do you think is going to happen? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, how do you guys feel? Like, what's the flip side of this? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're just letting this this piece of property just sit there, like, yes, in a perfect world, you should be able to just let it sit there. But that's not the case, right? Like, where's the accountability on the homeowners at this point? Well, I could see I could see with the example where you're talking about St. Louis because those buildings are dilapidated and been left alone for 10, 20, 30 years. But, right. like, you know, talking about this lady in New York, for example. Yeah. That was like a house she inherited that's right. in like a neighborhood that is not a dilapidated house. Like that's the kind of shit that people yeah, do not yeah. stand for. Yeah. I mean that that's that's or like where was it in, or, in Oregon when someone went on vacation look, mm-hmm. and came back and there was tents in the yard. Look, that's dude, crazy. These yeah. people are fucking stealing, they're committing violent crime. They're not supposed to be here. They're not being held accountable to the law. They're getting all the privileges that an American citizen should be getting that they're not getting, Right. okay? Our veterans don't get treated like this. Our inner city communities don't get treated like this. These people are having the red carpet rolled out for them, and they are immune to any consequences for anything that they do. And that's intentional. It's intentional because what they're trying to do is bring in a new population of people because the current population of American citizens does not believe or support the government right now. So their their response is not, hey, let's fix our policies. Their response is, well, fuck them. We'll bring in more people. And that's what they're doing. And <clears throat> which we cannot handle. Huh? We, our, our country as no, a and these can't handle these it. leftists are going to say, well, this is great for the city because they're maintaining the houses and they're doing this and they're doing that. Okay, how are they going to get the funds to fucking fix these houses? Mm-hmm. How are they, when we have Tyson Chicken laying off Americans, thousands of Americans to hire thousands of illegals because they can have cheaper fucking wages, what, like, can we not understand the flip that's happening here? And it's intentional. They're trying to flip Americans into extreme homelessness, poverty, and replace the lowest class of Americans with these migrants because the the poorest Americans typically vote Democrat and they're not voting Democrat anymore because they realize that the Democrats are full of shit. So this is their solution. And they're bringing, these people are not the... The road scholars of these countries, they're not the humanitarians of these countries. These are people who have been in prison, who commit crimes that their own country is happy to fucking remove. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, I stand by, dude, Americans are going to have to stand up, dude. Your your ass, listen, dude, your ass is going to have to stand on the line. That's it. And it's not just one person. It's not just a few persons. It's not, oh, well, you first. It's in our own neighborhoods. We're going to have to hold the line. That's 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 not an organized movement. Like people think it's an or they're waiting for an organized leader and movement to come along that they can join. Listen, this is your responsibility in your neighborhood. Just like you said, you would handle it in your community. And, and to your point, DJ, I can understand, okay, well, you know, nobody's using these buildings. Well, on somebody's balance sheet, those buildings mm-hmm. are an equitable asset, okay? So you, if you Not own, yeah. yeah, if yeah. you own a hundred uh, rentals and half of them aren't occupied and they get taken over by Venez- Venezuelan migrants, do you deserve to lose that equity off your balance sheet because for people that don't belong here? No. Or for anybody who even belongs here. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, dude, I can understand, you know, people trying to justify it. Oh, but it's not right. And no. it's not cool. And um, it's people that have never I had think, to earn any of their well, shit. Well, I think what we're going to see, it. I think what we're going to see, who's been buying all the homes the last couple of years? Uh, Who? Two, two main companies. Private so, equity. Yeah. BlackRock. Yeah. BlackRock. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see BlackRock come out and say, all those homes we bought, we have a migrant program, and they're all mm-hmm. that. And I think that's the purpose of why they've been buying all these houses, <clears throat> which means they're going to put these fucking people potentially in your neighborhood as your neighbor on your fucking dime because they're all going to be on government assistance. They're all. And by the way, I saw this meme last night where some somebody was making fun of. Uh, actually, I got it right here. It was uh, the headline was from Howard Dean, 
And it said, and it was MSNBC, it said, Biden is going to win election reasonably handily. And people were laughing in the comments. Well, he is going to win the election handily because between now and then, he's going to figure out a way to get all these people to vote. Okay. And they're going to vote for him. Not passively, not moderately, but enthusiastically because their ass is on the line to be deported at a mass scale. So when we really think about what's going on here and you guys think the election's in the bag and, you know, the culture has changed and everybody, no, it hasn't because these people are importing people at numbers that are greater than what the numbers are for the other side. So Americans are going to have to stand up. They're going to have to fucking make sure that these people are not allowed to vote. They're going to have to man the polls. They're going to have to do all the shit that the other team does. They're going to have to ballot harvest. They're going to have to work. They're going to have to make sure there's no cheating. And that's going to be a requirement. And I don't know that conservatives will do that. I like the funny thing about all this is the people you're saying that are going to support it and say, yeah, but they're maintaining these homes are the same people complaining that they can't afford a home. You know, you have like yeah. this whole millennial generation, and I, I'm mm-hmm. part of that generation myself, where they're complaining about the price of housing. But you're totally fine with someone just coming in and taking a house yeah, when, you've been, when you've been busting your ass trying to, you know, get out of an apartment your whole life. Like, you shouldn't be okay with that. Yeah. And, and they're not going to let you take a house. Mm-hmm. Dude, I was, we joked about it last night when you yeah. called me. I was like, man, Andy, I'm thinking about selling my place and just taking something. I hate paying a mortgage. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we got um, a house. I got, we got a- <laughs> yeah. But if this, there's, I mean, a, there's a person, there's, yeah, there's a, a, there's a, there's a, there, yeah, DJ and I got it right. Well, I you were. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. yeah. If this, I think if this happens in your neighborhood and you don't do anything about it, you're just as much a part of the problem. You, no, you are a part of the problem. And if you stay silent about it, you're part of the problem. Like at this point in time, if you're silent about what's going on in this country, you are part of the fucking problem. This yeah. wouldn't have happened in like the 1950s. You know, like, this wouldn't have happened. I, this wouldn't have happened four, five, six years ago. I'm just saying, like back then, it was like you know, you took out your neighbor's trash for them, you helped your neighbor. Like it seemed like there's a real sense of community back then that we've totally lost. Um, and I think social media has kind of created a lot of that failed, failed community. Well, that goes back to that goes back to the demoralization of the country. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but you see what I'm saying, though. Like, if if, I have a good relationship with my neighbors, I talk with them, you know, I help them take their trash out when they're traveling. I know, look after their yard. And so I would do this for them. And I don't think a lot of neighborhoods have that anymore. No, no. I I got some cool neighbors. (laughs) I I know, I I know one of your neighbors you're not a fan of. uh, There's, there's, there's a, there's, (laughs) there, most of them are really cool. Yeah, most of them, majority. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But no, I think, I think that's the real, that's the real thing, you know, with this whole situation, man. It's like, we have to get back to this concerted effort and intentional push of unity amongst Americans, right? Because that's the only way this shit is going to get fixed. Yeah. Dude, you know this even saying? goes back to what you're talking about with architecture. Like, if you lived in a neighborhood that was all beautiful Victorian homes and wasn't a bunch of cookie cutter looking little, you know, shit boxes, and you saw someone come in and take one of these homes and start fucking it up, you'd be like, no, that's such and such's home. That's that family's home. Like, you'd feel a connection most to that house. can tell you their neighbor's name, bro. Bro, yeah. listen. This is a time in history where American men are needed more than ever. That's the truth. This is the most important. I believe this is the most important time in our country's history. I believe that. And I believe that if we don't stand up and we don't speak up and we don't start getting our shit together really fucking fast, we're going to lose the country for real. So do you guys understand? If you want to really understand what's going on, go find out how many European immigrants came between the year 1800 and the 1920s to the, to the United States. And then go look at how many of these immigrants, migrants came in the last four years. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's insane. It's like a 10 X multiple. Or yes. Something, isn't it? I think I've seen. So where do you think, where do you think this country is going to be in 20 or 30 years? Okay. Like people don't understand this. People are not thinking about this. Like, these people have to be deported. They have to be deported. It's not, it's not optional. It's, they have to go. And that's just the reality. Otherwise, the country is over in terms of any sort of European descent at all over the next... Dude, the birth rate's down. Elon Musk talks about this all the time. Like, there, it's, it's, a, it's a genocide over the course of time, yeah. intentionally. Mm. 
Well, and Elon also talks about, you know, he's all for expediting, like, the legal path to citizenship. Yeah. You he's know, he an thinks immigrant. that things, you know, because he himself is an immigrant. He's, he's African American. I think a good way of thinking of, <laughs> I think a good way of thinking about this is like, you know, you have a concert venue, for example, you have 30,000 tickets. By selling tickets, you can control the flow into that concert and make sure only 30,000 people are there, which gives a better experience for everyone. If you just announced you were having a concert, and didn't sell tickets, and just let the doors open, it would ruin the experience for every fucking person there. Yeah. Because the whole thing would be a pandemonium. Yeah. And I think, it, you know, I think looking at immigration that way is important because when it's done legally, you, the flow is controlled. It's better for everyone. You know what's going on where. But right now it's just like this pandemonium where, I mean, you look like what happened at Woodstock 99 where like they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They yeah, got too many people disaster. in that area. It was disastrous. People were dying. Shit was on fire. And it was just a, it became like basically a shit box for three days. Um, and that's kind of essentially what's happening now without this control. Yeah. And yeah. I have a question. You might know this. You might not. not but with these squatters rights. If you squat on a house, can you use that as a permanent residence to now like expedite your citizenship? I'm not sure because well, it seems like something in that certain places you can certainly use that to vote. It seems like I was gonna. It seems like that would be a path. They are going to come up with a way between now <clears throat> and the election for these people all to vote. Mm -hmm. People, people don't think that's going to happen between now and then. That's already put those. That's 100 percent going to happen. 100 percent. New York City, uh, a couple of places in California, they've already put legislation down. Like, they've yeah, already put so, it on the table. Yeah, but dude, like, when I read the comments on that post, yeah. they were all laughing at him. Yeah. Like, this is why this is why you fuckers lost in 2020. Yeah. And besides, they stole it. But, you know, like, they can, they can only fudge so much. Yep. And, like, here's what happens every time. Conservatives and common sense people and pro-America people get all riled up and patriotic, and then they don't do shit. They don't show up. They don't fucking do any of the shit these other people do. They assume that they're going to steamroll and then they get beat. And it's just like every, it's just like sports. When people think, when you know, a good team mm -hmm. that thinks they're going to run over the other team and the other team beats the shit out of them. Like that's that's the problem with with the middle and the right. And not only that, they 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 don't work together. They look how many people argued over Trump and DeSantis so fucking passionately even though they're on the same team, right? Look at the way the conservative influencers consistently attack each other for who does more or who does what or how they do it. Like, bro, that's never going to win anything. That We're not going to win that way. Common sense will lose that way because what we're facing here is a fight to the death. Elon tweeted this today. It was a tweet that he tweeted today. It says... Um, it says, this is a battle to the death with the anti-civilization -civil woke mind virus. My positions are centrist, secure borders, safe and clean cities, don't bankrupt America with spending, racism against any race is wrong, no sterilization below the age of consent. Is this right wing? Well, according to them, it's far right wing. Mm -hmm. But he's correct about that first statement, that this is a fight to the death. Because these people will not tolerate anything other than their narrative. And I think they've proven that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't accept everything they say, you're a bigot, you're a racist, you're a misogynist, cancel you, fire you, ruin your reputation. These people are communist and they intend to win and they're not around and americans think that can never happen here and it's happening right in front of their face and half of the fucking people are like bro you don't even know what communism is no you don't know what communism is you don't know what communism is because it doesn't look like communism until the mask comes off and they tell you to face the fucking wall okay and if we look at all the things that are happening in this country with the migration invasion and the weaponization of the doj and People being held responsible like Daniel Penny for standing up in society. How can society function without great men standing up for their community and being put in jail? You see what I'm saying? So like all the pieces are in place for America to legitimately be conquered. And unless people start coming together as Americans, which we have been calling for on this show for years, it's not black, white, left, right, gay, straight. You are a f 
fucking American, and now we are facing a legitimate invasion from people who are not a member of that. And if you are on the team of the other team, then you are an enemy of America, bro. That is just real shit. And people need to come together. They need to put their differences aside. They need to say, hey, you know what? You're right. I don't agree with you necessarily politically or socially, but this is our f***ing shit and nobody's going to take it. Mm-hmm. And that's the attitude that Americans have to come to for us to fix what's going on here. Yeah, yeah. That's real, man. Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, let's cruise some. Uh, and I, I saw this comment. thought we'd go down the rabbit hole a little bit. Oh, really? <laughs> See what you guys thought about this comment. This comment comes from at Kevin Lewis 9151 He says, Mike Tyson is Illuminati. I guarantee he's got someone giving him 18-year-old blood transfusions daily, and he's going to be an animal and rip Jake Paul apart. That's a troll comment. He's just <laughs> around. I bet, he he's, I bet he's beer bong and infant blood. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> he's eating babies, which is kind of funny because d- during the fight, that one t- I think it was when he fought Evander Holyfield and he bit his ear off. Yeah, yeah, totally. He went crazy after uh-huh. the fight, and he goes, I'll eat your f- children i remember oh, that fuck. yeah did he say that really oh fuck yeah I there's a clip of him saying it no Throw it in the show. Didn't, he, didn't he talk about like eating someone's balls too i don't know probably I, no I, I i'll think, eat your balls i, I think part, <laughs> I, I swear to god part of that same rant or another rant he talks about eating someone's balls listen i, I would say he's he, some white boy in the ass he said that one that right. was during the interview i mean he did go to jail yeah you know white boy you love it that's what he said something something to the effect of that <laughs> well, well i read today they're trying to get this sanctioned as like a real fight in the state of texas so hopefully that you know Makes it less of an exhibition and more of an actual fight. Always confusion with Mike Tyson, who's standing by with Jim Gray. Jim? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Steve. Mike, was that your shortest fight ever? I bear witness there's only one God, and Muhammad's blessings and peace be upon him as his prophet. I dedicate this fight to my brother, Darrell Baum, who died. I'll be there to see you. I love you with all my heart. All praise be to my children. I love you. Oh, oh God, oh, man, what? Is this your shortest fight ever? In any time, amateur, professional ever? No, it's not it. Um, oh, maybe it is it. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, Lennox Lewis, Lennox, I'm coming for you. Mike, is it frustrating to train like you did and then have no, this in seven or eight seconds? For this fight. I only trained probably two weeks or three weeks for this fight. I had to bury my best friend, and I dedicated this fight. I wasn't going to fight. I dedicated this fight to him. I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's the never fight. been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from Nairclaw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. Fuck. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. I, mean, I don't think he's joking. Mike, Mike. I'm not fighting that guy. Yeah. <laughs> at that time, he definitely wasn't. No. Yeah, I think he was very much a savage at that point in yeah. his career. Yeah, fuck, man. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know. I, Kevin, listen, you, I, maybe. Yeah. Hey. Why do we talk about Tyson every time on here? Like, I think the first time I was on here is when Tyson had, like, a gun pulled on him on a rooftop at some comedy yeah. club or no, something. No, I, I remember that. And we talked about that, too. It feels like Tyson's yeah. always a, a like this repeat character. Guy or something, yeah. I, you know, I don't know, man. I think, you know, Who he knows? said he eats children. <laughs> I mean, maybe he was being serious. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Guys, we appreciate you guys coming. Bro, Kevin, everybody's Illuminati, man. Yeah, that's real. Just What's you know, the... Bro, you're doing the hand gesture Yeah, now. dude. The hand, I'm doing the hand <laughs> stuff. Look how Andy's holding his hands. He's controlled opposition. Get the fuck out of here, you fucking moron. Guys, we appreciate <laughs> you coming. more fucking Kool-Aid. We appreciate you guys coming, and thanks for being real ass fans. Let's get back to the cruise. Headline number two. Bro, have you really like seen how fucking far out there some of these people have gotten with this shit? Oh, some of this shit's wild. Bro. Some of this shit's wild. But then some of that shit, I'm like, eh, Michelle might have a dick. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't... <laughs> the problem with that, though, is you make the legitimate stuff like just get brushed under the rug. When you get too crazy and too deep into these holes, like it makes everything that's actually real just part of the same, you know, just just bullshit yeah. and so all the real stuff gets ignored because like oh that's you know that's just part Bro, of this I, I mean i'm not saying i don't think that shit's real i mean i think these motherfuckers do actually do that shit i think they i think they're into mm. children i think they f-ing, 
I think that adrenochrome shit is probably real. I think it's an underground thing. Like, dude, there's so many celebrities that have come out and kind of given the same account. You look at what uh, Ryan Garcia Ryan Garcia is saying, and like, dude, there's a whole bunch of celebrities that have been kicked out of Hollywood. They all have similar stories. I think you got to look back as at Hunter S. Thompson, you know, because he originally wrote about that in The Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I think it was like the first time Adrenochrome was mentioned in like the mainstream was in that book. And at the time, Hunter S. Thompson was a journalist and he was known as by like being a very brutally honest journalist. I mean, he wrote that Hell's Angel by, uh, you know, book that was, you know, kind of put him on the map. And so he talked about Adrenochrome in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And a lot of people point to that as like him being very honest about stuff he'd heard or seen because yeah. that's what he was known before yeah. he before he became like the gonzo character and like coked out of his mind and really lost himself you know the last couple of years of his life he couldn't understand a word that guy said he was so fucked up but for a while there he was a very legitimate very honest straightforward journalist with what he wrote about well i mean if we're voting i'm voting they probably do this shit they probably do it yeah, yeah I, i'm saying i'm saying like claims like the problem is you make claims about like you know mike tykes and stuff being illuminati and jokes like this like you kind of uh you disparage like the reality of what it really is when you go that far yeah I but think, i think he's I, joking around though i, I think yeah. that's a i think i don't think that's a serious comment but yeah you know i do think i don't know i don't think i don't mike, think mike tyson's doing no it. i don't think so either but there somebody's doing <laughs> it. mike tyson did he still have all his money yeah, that's true yeah <laughs> that's true for real that's true <laughs> Well, guys, let's get uh, keep this cruise moving. Got headline number two. Got headline number two reads: No charges filed after New York City subway rider shot at passengers, took cover, uh, and screamed there were babies on board. Uh, let's dive into this. This is coming straight out of New York City. Coming out of the Big Apple, this headline uh, article reads: A 36-year-old man was shot with his own gun on a New York City subway Thursday as terrified riders took cover screamed that there were babies on board and begged for someone to open the train doors so they could get to safety. While Brooklyn District Attorney's Office spokesperson Oren uh, Yaniv uh, on Friday said the shooting, quote, was shocking and deeply upsetting. Uh, he added that, quote, at this stage, evidence of self-defense precludes us from filing any criminal charges against the shooter. Uh, so the incident on a northbound A train, which was captured on video, comes on the heels of a string of violent crimes on the city subway system that prompted New York Governor Kathy Hochul to deploy a force of 1,000, um, including 750 National Guard, to increase security on the transit network. Uh, videos posted on social media show the unidentified 36-year-old man approaching a 32-year-old passenger and getting into a verbal dispute. The footage appears to show the 36-year-old ranting and yelling and threatening to beat up the 32-year-old. Um, now, you guys can tell this, obviously. So who shot thing. who? The 36-year-old? So the 36-year-old is the aggressor. Okay, so he got He's shot. He's the one with his gun. He has a gun. Got it. So he, he started, started some bullshit shit and got shot. He fucked around and, found and he out. fucking found out. All right. Here's the clip. So the guy took his gun and yeah. shot him. Mm -hmm. Multiple times. Okay. Yep, so charges have been dropped. It's all been ruled. Uh, as of right now, it's self-defense. Um, but it did make me... Think about a different case that also happened on a New York City subway. Andy, you actually alluded to it a little bit. Um, the Daniel Penny situation. Um, so this comes out literally right at the same time that, uh, you know, the DA's office, the same DA's office um, that charged Daniel Penny. Uh, his trial just got set uh, for October 8th of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, former Marine uh, Daniel Penny is, quote, confident He'll beat the manslaughter charges he faces for killing homeless man Jordan Neely on a New York City subway last May, his attorney told the Post Wednesday, as a Manhattan judge set the trial for October 8th. Uh, the proceedings will likely last about four weeks, although they could run as long as six, Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Max, uh, Maxwell Wiley said during the hearing. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, I think, I think I know what the difference is between these. Can I say it? Well, I was going to say it. Okay. You can say what you think, but I, I have a, I have an interesting... Uh... Um, one of them is brown, mm -hmm. and the other one is not brown. Okay. That, that, that's one. See, I thought that, you know, the reason that uh, uh, charges were pressed in this case with Daniel Penny is because they were able to find a nice picture of the person that makes him look so sweet and innocent. But yeah, I can see your point, too. Yeah, like that's it, the guy that shot the guy. No, no, this that's is the guy uh, that got shot. Daniel Penny. That's the homeless guy. Right. Got it. Daniel Penny. Yeah. Well, people they, don't realize like, if they find a picture of you from like preschool or something. Then yeah, you're getting charges. No, bro. The, listen, 
this is the the guy who just shot that guy is brown. Mm-hmm. Daniel Penny is white, and they're holding this guy in jail for the last since last May, all the way through till October, and who knows how much longer after that. And that was he was standing up for a bunch of people in the subway against this guy who was going fucking insane. Mm-hmm. The same shit that other guy was doing, right? Threatening people, getting mm-hmm. in their face, fucking with them. And he tr- he stepped in as a man trying to protect the people on that train. And if we create a society where good men go to jail for doing the right thing and protecting women and children and other citizens, we cannot have a functioning society. It's impossible. So, you know, I it is what it is, man. Like, the, guy, the guy's being held because it's okay to charge a white person and hold them right now. And the 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 in cities like New York and cities like St. Louis, uh, black people are not being held to the same standard. Mm-hmm. And that's just reality. So we have to get back to everybody, no matter what race they are, if they break the law, they are held accountable equally. And this kind of double standard only promotes more racial animosity between white people and black people. And that's intentional. Yeah. And so it's very important for everybody out here to not buy into that artificial division that's happening. And it's bullshit that Daniel Penny is uh, is is in there 100 percent. But you can't allow that to like make you see your fellow citizen in a different way. We have yeah. to realize be that better than that. We have to realize that we're being sucked into racial division very intentionally. Um, it doesn't mean that what they're doing isn't happening, though, because it is happening. Yeah. I mean, aside from racial division, too, I think the whole, the real problem with this case is it makes men not want to stand up. It makes you afraid to do the right thing. Of course. You see what happens to other men who do. So we talk about people that need to stand up for, you know, all this shit going on. It makes you be like, well, look what they did to him. Yeah. It's very intentional because it makes you not want to act. Yeah. Um, well, and that's why, that's why they've passed those laws, too, where now police can be held personally mm-hmm. liable for something that happens on the job i mean going back to that subway shooting though i was honestly just surprised that any guy who wears a cross body bag was able to wrestle a gun away from someone yeah i well, mean that that to me point. was shocking <laughs> <laughs> yeah if i see a guy with a cross body bag i'm like i could fuck that guy up <laughs> but i mean he came out victorious so props to him yeah i, I mean want to know man who's that guy this is the the guy that, that shot him oh is he not brown uh, no, I, I would say he's he's he's, def- he's not white. Yeah, no, he's not white. Well, I mean, look, dude, they're charging they're they're these people that commit these crimes as migrants. They're marking them as white people. They are doing that. Yeah, yeah, they are doing that, man. Not, it's just you know, listen, it sucks, but you know, here, here's the important thing. I, we say this all the time, especially when it comes to legal stuff, right? Like it's all about precedence, right? And like what what is the precedence that's being set in this case? And so, you know, I see this, and and, and I hope that you know, with this being set how it is, that you know, more people do see see this and be like, okay, well, it didn't happen to this guy, so maybe there is a chance of gleamer of hope. I don't know if the DA's office in New York City, you know, this we are in a different environment than we were even a year ago. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know, man. This guy should not be in jail. No, Daniel Penny should not be in yeah. there. Is, is he being held without bail and stuff? I, I'm not sure. I believe that he's in jail right now. I th- well, yeah, I think, no, I think he did. I think there were some issues about them trying to deny him bail huh. uh, in, initially. I think he did made he out. But they raised it up so fucking absorbently, but I think he ended up getting like a GoFundMe. He might be. I, I, I don't, I'm not, a, see if you can pull that up, if he's in or <laughs> out. Um, but I know at first they were not trying to let, get, let him have bail at all. Bro, I mean, yeah. You know. No, it's fucked I mean, up. Th- dude, listen, here's the reality. If enough people stand up, there's nothing they can do. What are they going to do, arrest everybody? Right. It's time for people to stand up. It really is. Like, if you see some fucking shit going down and you don't assert yourself, mm-hmm. you're part of the problem. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the thing. I was watching that video. I was trying to see if anyone ever tried to step in and break it up. And that one guy wearing a construction vest looked, looked like, like he, he was kind of trying to protect He looked like he tried him. to get in for a minute. But other yeah. than that, everyone else just cowered away. And that's very common on the subway system right now from my understanding i was talking to some friends that i have that still live in new york i used to live in new york and 
you know, one of one of my good friends I was talking to, I was telling you about her last night. I mean, she's lived in New York her whole life, and she's like, I don't ride the subway anymore. She's like, I used to always ride the subway. It's it's pretty critical to getting around New York. Like the subway is the backbone of that city for a lot of people, and it's at a state where people don't don't even ride it anymore because there's so much shit like this going on, and you're locked in a box with someone, and it's it's bad. It's bad news. And like you know what we're saying about this other guy is. You see someone stand up and get in trouble for it. Why the fuck is anyone else going to try? Yeah, see here in Missouri, dude. What would have happened is <laughs> one of the one of us would have been had. We would have had a gun, mm-hmm. you know? and that guy with the gun would have got shot. Well, this is the problem with New York, and we talked about this. You can't even carry a pocket knife in New York. Yeah, that's crazy. You dude. know, when I moved there, I had no idea. I grew up in Utah. I always had a pocket knife on me. It's just something like you know, it's like a set of keys. You put a pocket knife in your pocket. You never know when you might need it to cut something. Or I just I consider it like a tool that I always had. I lived in New York for a year, walking to my office every day with a buck knife in my pocket, and I had no idea that had I been busted with that, I would have been charged with a concealed weapon. Until I read a story about a chef who had been gotten on, gotten on the subway after work with his chef knives and got busted for it and did jail time for it. I had no mm-hmm. idea. And that was one of the things that prompted me to leave New York, too. Um, I felt like once I learned that, I was like, wow, this I don't like it in this city. I, I love New York for a lot of reasons, but that, that to me was one of the reasons why I, I started – you know, looking to move out. Isn't that crazy, though? The states or the cities with the strongest fucking weapon laws are also the states and the cities with the most amount of violent crime. Isn't that weird? Not really. No, I mean, not it's really. Like, it's like, I mean, it's like if you put, if you if you put a wolf in a in a hen house, yeah. I mean, it's it's gonna do what it wants to do. Yeah, and there's no good wolves. Yeah, <laughs> you prevent people. From you being you good take wolves. all the teeth out of the good wolves. You right. Put, you well, you put, take the you take the one sheep dog, and then yeah. you you punish it for defending the flock. Yeah. You know. Dude, look, man, this is th- what's happening here. Th- this is what J6 was about, too. J6 was about coming down so hard on the mm-hmm. people that were there that no one wants to protest. No one wants to assemble. Nobody wants to do anything. It was a completely orchestrated event intentionally. The the footage that comes out supports that claim. The denial of 25,000 troops that Trump requested supports that claim. The unavailability of the all the footage supports that claim these people up there in washington know what happened on j6 they just don't want to say it the i'm talking about the republicans now they just don't want to say it because they're afraid of the backlash yeah and that was about intimidating people into not protesting it, it was to squash preemptively any sort of resistance they might have yep and this daniel penny case is no different. This is a good opportunity for them to show everybody what happens when good men stand up and try to defend what's actually happening that is evil. And without that element in society, our society cannot function. And all of these middle upper class white women who do brunch that fucking champion all these causes, you know, feminism, no guns, uh, you know, all the, they're now they're going to they're going to be screaming when all this shit comes to a head and they're going to be saying this. Where are all the good men? Where are all the great men? Why are you men such pussies? Where are the men? They're going to say that over and over again, just like they say right now. Where are all the men to date? Well, nobody wants to date you because anytime someone gives you a compliment, it's harassment. Mm -hmm. Anytime someone does anything as a man, you guys go on the internet and fucking destroy them. And men have figured out, like, fuck these bitches. That's what they figured out. Okay? So they don't want to- open your open my door for me? Yeah, right. Right. Like, you guys have caused this. (laughs) And for this to get corrected, women have to correct it. And so, dude, this this situation is going to lead- to such violence and such destruction and honestly the rape and murder of many many women because that's what's been happening in europe all right and women are going to be screaming they're going to say where are the good men where are they where are they remember you're the one that championed all the rights for these people you're the one that simped for these people you're the one that felt sorry for them you're the one that said it was racist to hold people accountable you're the one you're the one you're the one Okay, so when this shit comes to your fucking brunch table and some dude follows you home and follows you into your house and sexually assaults you or steals your purse or beats your ass on the street because he wants your handbag or corners you and does some shit to you, just remember what you did before that happened. Because good men in America 
are willing to stand up, but we have been villainized and we have been neutered by the law and punished now because of these progressive far left policies that the little brunch crowd decides they're going to fucking champion every single Sunday and Saturday with their mimosas. Yeah, that's real shit, man. Guys, jump in on this conversation down in the comments. Let us know what you guys think. Uh, with that being said, let's get to our third and final headline. Headline number three. Headline number three reads, ex-NBC exec Mike Sington deletes tweet calling Baron Trump's fair game on his 18th birthday amid wave of criticism. This f***ing pedophile. <laughs> let's dive into this. Is that what he meant by that? F yeah, bro. I thought he meant fair game, like, to, oh. to attack him. Oh, no, 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 you look back at his old tweets, and he's talking oh, about he's like, Kaufman, how he's handsome and likes that he's tall. Oh, like, no it's, shit. It's All right, well, let's go. Here's a pedophile. Let's see this. Blood chipper. Um, a former NBC executive who caught Baron Trump fair game on his 18th birthday, like, you know, he's turning 18. Now he's fair game, mm -hmm. right? Like, Some yeah, I've been watching shit. him. Yeah, I've been yeah. watching him since he was a little kid. Now he's legal. Right now, yeah. he's fair game. Because I, 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 I originally thought it was you thought Andy. I thought he was saying fair game, like we can talk shit on him. That's what I thought. Until I looked into it and saw people pull his old tweets where he's constantly no complimenting shit. his looks, talking about how tall he is, like everything. How he wants to get dicked down by Baron. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yeah. Is well, where he, he wants where that he red Baron. That <laughs> <it. laughs> <laughs> red rocket. Hey man, we got plenty of wood chippers for people like this. Yeah, that's what it needs, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he, so he uh, he deleted the tweet after being accused of inciting attack against the former president's son. Even this article is not even painting it how it really is. Um, but Mike Singleton enraged followers yesterday with the post, with many reporting him to That's Elon Musk. That's because they're pedophiles too, bro. Right. Uh, Elon Musk and Twitter. Uh, he has since removed it, but is yet to apologize. Instead, telling Newsweek, quote, I posted he was fair game. Now, meaning as an adult, he's fair game for criticism from the press. Uh, quote, someone pointed out to me, fair game could mean fair game to be harmed. Um, in the booty. Uh, he says, quote, <laughs> I don't wish physical harm on anyone, so I took it down. I listened to the comments and criticism I received. NBC, where Sington uh, says he worked for 30 years, is uh, yet to publicly comment. So this is the tweet he put down. Uh, Baron Trump turns 18 today. He's fair game now. And this is the guy who said it. This is oh, Mike. Fuck. This is Mike. Why do they all look the same, bro? Yeah, I don't know, man. He likes booty. I'll oh, tell you that. Dude, he likes little kids. He likes booty. He likes booty. Charlie Kirk. Hopkins Wait, hold on. I want to see these tweets of him with his little kid tweets. The old ones? Do we got that? I can pull them up. Let me see. Man, this guy don't look right, does he? No, he doesn't. He's a creep, man. <clears throat> look at that. Like, if you saw that dude, you would know he's into some weird ass shit. Yeah. Uh, so this is Mike Sington. This is, an, uh, this is uh -huh. April 6th of 2022. He says, quote, heterosexual grooming, a set of practices and expectations based on a child's assigned gender at birth which promotes the formation of a romantic relationship with the opposite sex. It begins at a very young age and is often aggressively carried out. Why would you post that? Well, first, because you're mad that you're homosexual, okay? He's upset that he's that he's homosexual. Let me explain something to you, bro. There's this thing. It's called a fucking penis, mm -hmm. okay? And there's this other thing. It's called a vagina. Mm -hmm. And those things go together naturally from nature. Mm -hmm. And when the penis squirts out a little juice... It fucking makes a little baby and it comes out the vagina. All right. This is this is this is not grooming. This is the this is called the way it fucking it's works. Birds and the bees, baby. Yeah, bro. So like <laughs> let's like what the f like there's no heterosexual grooming. It's called the way it is. Is that your birds and the bees? So so who grooms all the animals in nature? I was just gonna say you don't have to groom your yeah, dog. Like who groom who grooms all the deer and who grooms all the bears and who grooms all the gorillas like who's out there grooming these motherfuckers to be heterosexual this might be the dumbest tweet i've ever seen in my life this is the where it starts to get creepy is yeah, this this is series. uh from this is from march 20th of 2018 mike sington tweets out first son baron trump celebrates his 12th birthday today let's take a look back it's just like i mean just weird pictures bro weird weird pictures uh, he says uh quote uh, everyone's talking about how tall Baron Trump is here towering over Mike Pence. For his family's sake, I only wish him the best. That he be gay and ends up marrying a guy from a shithole country and they buy a nice home together in Mexico. Yeah. Dude, what's wrong with this motherfucker? What's... Whatever, man. I mean... 
Yeah, put them on. <laughs> put them on the wood chipper list. You know. Yeah. So uh, so so Charlie Kirk called him disgusting. Yeah. Um. You know, other people were you know in the comments sounds like incitement to me. What a horrible thing to say. Somebody else was even like, even uh, he's like, I'm a Democrat, and this is bad. No, they said this is bad, and I'm not even a Republican. So I mean, like, I mean, people have been on it, man. Um, but the, Baron is tall. I think he's like six seven, dude. How tall are you? Six six. Oh, damn. He's fucking tall. Yeah, he is. Trump's a big dude, bro, and he towers over Trump. Trump's like six four, right? I think six, he's like six, six three. three yeah. Six three. Yeah. yeah. Trump's a big dude, bro. He's like two eighty. The thing yeah, about I think guy. the thing about this that I find very hypocritical is you know for a long time a lot of men have been like you know the hustler barely legal club barely legal girls that are eighteen and women have always been like that's disgusting that's creepy and most guys will get it's creepy why aren't any of them saying that about this guy at this time you know yo Mike Mike's happy right now you know no <laughs> dude listen <laughs> these people are afraid. They've been bullied for the last 15, 20 years pretty hard. But I'm saying if, if it was someone saying that about someone's daughter just turning 18, they'd be on them all over well, the I don't think I, I don't think that, right I think people are reading it how we read it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think so as, too. As like, I think he's happy we're reading it like yeah. how everybody read it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, is, it is a little bit of a weird situation where the intentions can be misstrewed. I, mean, I, he, I would check that dude's f-ing hard drives, bro. Check yeah. all of them, bro. Check Look, dude, his fucking hard drives. Th- this, there's those accounts that we follow on Instagram that like chase the pedophiles down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what was it, J and them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's bro. the one I was telling you about. The yeah, guy bro. from Pinterest. He was yeah. on one of those. Yeah, dude. Busted. Like, look, dude, those guys are exposing t- t- to the world if you, uh, just how common this shit is. Like, this is very common. Like, these people are everywhere. They're in your grocery store, they're in your gym, they're in. The places that you go every day. I saw one where it was a school principal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, like, dude, you guys with kids, you need to be very careful. And you men out there, when this shit starts to happen, you need to handle it. Mm-hmm. Got to handle it. Is that, in, uh, where, is that Trump Towers? That's a lot of fucking gold. It's got to be. Trump likes that gold. That, Trump likes that shit. That old school gold, man. That's a lot he of likes gold. That, he likes that. That royalty type. Well, that's fucking. what made him like, uh, I mean, prior to him being a president, he was huge in the hip hop community. Yeah. Everyone had a rapper yeah. they talked about living hey, like Donald Trump. Bro, I would tell you this. I don't I don't hate on it at all. I think, yeah. I mean, it's like his own style. I'm saying it's like, a little it, old school for me, mm-hmm. but it's fucking badass. Yeah. yeah. Did you see that trying to take Trump Tower from him now? Yeah. I what do you mean? That. Letitia one James. That, you know, Letitia she filed James, paperwork bro. today. Yeah. They're trying to, because he, you know, he can't pay half a billion dollars. I thought he was a billionaire. First of all, nobody like who's gonna have that liquid like that? nobody. Well, I actually, there's a few guys, right? There, there's a few, but yeah. but I mean, they you know their names, right? You know what I'm saying? Nobody walks around with hundreds. It just shows you how financially illiterate the average person is. Because mm. I saw like hundreds of those comments. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, are you guys you, what do you? Yeah, here, I'll what just you, write the check. Here, what here. the fuck <laughs> do you guys think? Do you think... Even if I had it, I'm not fucking paying it, bitch. Hold on. <laughs> Do you think that this dude just walks around with... Like, they think that eight, nine billion... This guy... They think they this guy has nine billion dollars in cash or whatever the fuck he's worth, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they don't... Like, the general public, dude, nowadays is so, like, misinformed about just basic life skills. Every person who has wealth... Their wealth is usually tied up in equity and opportunities that grow faster than the interest rate that they can get on other sorts of investments. Trump is a smart man. He has his money working for him. Regular people don't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. They think, oh, you're a millionaire. You got a million dollars in cash or you're a billionaire. You got a billion dollars in cash. That's not how it works, bro. Almost all these dudes, their net worth is tied up in their assets that can then be borrowed against or sold to create the liquid that you think that they have. Right. And what Trump is doing, he's saying, I'm not fucking selling shit right. to pay you motherfuckers. That's what he's saying. And that it's being it's being played as he's broke. He doesn't have any money. <laughs> and it's not the truth. What he's saying is, I ain't selling shit. Fuck you. That's what he's saying. Well, yeah. it's not even the general public. I saw, I think it was a representative for the state of California. I'm not sure. It was it was someone in Congress who said, I know Trump's not a billionaire because I can do math. 
referring to this kind of thing. I saw that thing. Ted Lieu is who that was. Yeah, was he mm-hmm. like representing California? Yeah, he's a, a congressman for, yeah. California, yeah. right? What, what math was he doing? <laughs> saying that like, you know, if he was a billionaire, he'd have the cash. But then Mark Cuban- The dude's got golf courses worth almost a billion dollars. What I'm saying, but what I thought was cool though is Mark Cuban stepped in and Cuban and Trump hate each other. Mark yeah. Cuban stepped in and said, listen, you don't know anything about finances. Let me explain to you how finances work as a billionaire. Yeah. And Mark Cuban basically said what you just said. Yeah attacking this congressman so it's not just the general public yeah, it's, it's like it's, anyone in opposition yeah. that is making up this lie about finances yeah. so i actually thought it was really cool of cuban to step in and well, explain to him you know, how liquidity listen, and assets work i think mark cuban is off on a lot of his opinions politically but generally like as a dude i've always been a fan you know what i'm saying as a business mm-hmm. guy and what Shark he's tank. done bro he's badass yeah I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he's smart too. So, like, it's he would be an interesting guy for us to talk to because, like, why are you gay? <laughs> no, <laughs> first question. <laughs> yeah. No, I just think, I just think, because, dude, you know, when people are that intelligent, they usually have logical points to base their opinions in. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's his opinions. They're just still wrong. They're, yeah, all, all they're good. wrong, bro. Yeah, <laughs> they disagree with mine, so they're no, wrong. Let's talk yeah, Cuban. Yeah. Somebody like Cuban. Let's let's do it. Yeah, let's fucking Come do on it. the show. Let's get him on here, man. Look, look I've always liked him. Yeah, he's he cool. seems like, I like a cool him on dude. Shark Tank, bro. Yeah, I love his passion for his shit that he does. It's yeah. badass. It's admirable. But you know, and I think as a, I think this brings up another point is that we have to get back to being cool with people that we may not agree with totally. everything they fucking say politically, like. Mm-hmm. You know, I dude, it's so funny. I get these DMs sometimes that are like, F- you and your f- opinions and you're a f- idiot, blah, blah, blah. And I'll just write them back. I'll be like, well, I mean, everybody's entitled to their opinion, man. This is America. Like, if that's really what you feel, like, that's cool. And they're like, well, bro, like, I, I didn't I didn't think you were actually going to message me back. <laughs> also, you just being a dick. Yeah. And then, you know, and usually they're like, oh, dude, you know, I was having a bad day or whatever. Like. You know, it's kind of like customer service these days. Like customer service has gotten so bad that when people want something done, they actually call the company and motherfuck them up and down right out the gate because they think that's what it takes to get something done because everything else is so bad. And when we think about like the discourse that's happening in society, it's been so bad for so long that people automatically go to the attack, you know, and sink and kill their entire lives mode instead of actually having a conversation based around why you think what you think yeah. and then being able to say, okay, well, I disagree with you, bro, but I mean, we still drink a beer. You know what I'm saying? But here's right. the problem, bro. A lot of people on that left side are unwilling to do that. They can't do it. Yeah. They're not they willing do to it. do it, dude. And you know why they're not willing to do it? Because most of their points are not based in actual fact and they have a hard time backing them up. That's why they go immediately to name calling. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When, when you go to name, when someone goes to name calling on you, you you've lost. won the argument. Yep. Mm-hmm. They've lost. You've yep. won. That's right. 100. percent I don't know if you had this experience growing up, but some of my best friends I didn't like initially. Yeah. Like friends that I have from high school. Yeah. Like in high school, we didn't like each other. Yeah. I mean, I even have friends that like we got in fights. Yeah. And then we ended up being like, wait a minute, we actually we were really similar, and those are fr- the friendships that I've had for yeah. 20 plus years. And if I had had that mentality back then of like, I'm never going to talk to this person, I would have missed out on some really good friendships that yeah. I've had because of that. Yeah, for sure, dude. I totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. It's real shit, man. Well, guys, that was our third and final headline. Let's get to our last segment of the show. Uh, we get thumbs up or dumb as fuck. It's where we bring an article up. We talk about it. It'll get one of those two options. So with that being said, our thumbs up or dumb as fuck headline reads, watch the incredible moment. An Oklahoma City Thunder fan wins $20,000 from stunning half-court shot on the night his team uh, record, 119-107, to win over the Jazz. Uh, it's a typo. Oklahoma, hmm? it's a typo. Uh, on the night his team record, recorded. A. On the his night of his team's record, record uh, 119-107 win. Record win o- over the Jazz. Oh, I got it. Yeah, yeah. What's that a record for? Um, I don't record know. win is what they're how they're meant for that to be read. What you the record fuck a win. Got it. Okay. Huh? Like you record a win. Uh, uh, when it be records? Like, yeah, I think is how he. In, the, I think it's saying like record win. I I think it's written by a dumbass. I think so too. I, well, think I mean, he look didn't at his name. Right word. Yeah. <laughs> Lo, Lociano. He sounds Italian. He might not be that dumb. It sounds Brazilian. Yeah. Are you Maybe saying? we're dumb. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it's us. We are Missourians. Yeah, that's right. 
Um, so an Oklahoma City Thunder fan left Paycom Center with $20,000 after making a half-court shot on Wednesday night. During the game between the Thunder and the Utah Jazz, 18-year-old Cody Hoover uh, was selected to attempt the big money shot courtesy of MidFirst Bank. Who, uh, Hoover marched onto the center court wearing a white Thunder jersey. The crowd cheered on the teenager as Oklahoma City mascot Rumble grabbed him by the head to wish him good luck. Um, as the drum roll commenced, Hoover took one dribble and a few steps towards the center court before pulling up for the shot. The ball kissed the glass before going in the hoop as the Oklahoma City crowd erupted in celebration. Uh, Hoover celebrated with the Storm Chasers by the OKC logo as he received his massive check. Arena MC Malcolm Tubbs noted that Hoover was the first fan to convert a half-court shot this season. Here's the clip. That was pretty cool. He's going to throw that all in crypto and lose it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, who well, knows? I say good thing it wasn't a duck contest. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> There, hey, there's some truth to stereotypes, man. I can accept the white people stereotypes. It's just y'all can't accept the other ones. What? Oh, white people can't jump. Hey. I mean, very rarely. I mean, didn't they make a whole movie to prove that wrong? Huh? Didn't they make a whole movie about that? Is there a movie called White, white Man White Can't, man can't Jump? Yeah, yeah. It's Woody Harrelson. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Did he jump? It's uh, isn't it Wesley Snipes in there too? I think so. I, yeah. I, I've never seen it. But though. didn't the whole didn't it prove that they could? Like, wasn't I can't remember. I mean, my, my I dad know, used to bro. watch it when I was like, we, yeah, he does, uh, right? Well, once we my dad, my dad outlier. used to watch. Is it the dude who's won the dunk contest the last couple years? Why, dude? Yeah, that's what I thought. He's pretty badass too. So huh. maybe there is exceptions. Outliers. That guy's not f***ing dunking. No. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but good job though. That's awesome. Don't waste it all yeah. in uh, crypto. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What we got on this? Thumbs up. Oh, that's I cool. mean, obviously. I mean, I don't know. That's like I, no contest. I think cryptos. I think cryptos maybe a little bit better than going down. Just being real. Hmm. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Sweet. Well, that was our thumbs up, man, guys. Andy, Kyle. That's all I got. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for having me back. It's always good to see you. We got a special episode with Kyle coming up that you guys are gonna like. Oh, we do? We do. Oh, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. The, the yeah, black yeah. leather couch. It's not the... Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Casting room. <laughs> it's not... It's... it's. Uh, You're going to learn why they call me Big Red. It's not this... <laughs> <laughs> See, that's one of them stereotypes is not true. <laughs> all right. It's because I'm tall. That's all there yeah, is to yeah. it. All right, guys. Don't be a hoe. Share the show.